Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yes. A 57-year-old female was uh, <coughs> taken to outside hospital with complaints of fever, vomiting, myalgia since five days. Uh, she was evaluated in outside hospital and was diagnosed to have uh, leptospirosis and was referred here for further management. On initial 10 second assessment, uh, patient airway was patent, she was speaking in full sentences. Breathing wise, respiratory rate was 26 per minute with a saturation of 98% with 5 liters of O2. Uh, circulation wise, BP was 100 by 60, heart rate of uh, 78 per minute, uh, capillary refill time was less than 2 seconds. Disability wise, GCS was uh, uh, E4, V5, M6, pupils bilaterally equally reactive. Exposure wise, temperature was EF febrile and GRBS was 204. Uh, on arrival, we took a point of care CBC CRP, uh, an ABG and an uh, ECG for the patient. Uh, point of care total counts, uh, CBC CRP showed a total counts of 12,000 with hemoglobin of 10.4, platelet of 10,000 and CRP of more than 230. Uh, we uh, arranged platelets for the patient at this moment. Uh, coming to ABG. What is the importance of CRP? It is an acute inflammatory marker. Okay. Tell me all the inflammatory markers, acute phase reactants, mm -hmm. positive and negative. So, acute uh, positive inflammatory markers are uh, CRP, and ferritin, CRP, ferritin. Uh, yes. ESR, ESR is more of uh, chronic, but it can also increase in acute reactions. Uh, negative will be albumin, sir. One more uh, uh, phase reactant is there, that is H. Platelet. H. platelet. It's not acute, it takes time. Okay. That's why you many patients with chronic inflammation, you can see thrombocytosis, very high platelet count. Okay. And you can see follow up all the patients after admission, discharge, like all sepsis patients, when they discharge and come back, their platelets should be always high. That is because of the, uh, that inflammation is still going on or it is coming down, platelets will come down after some days. Okay. Negative inflammatory mark? Albumin. Album. Uh, coming to the ABG, uh, pH was 7.4 with PCO2 of 39, uh, 35 and a PO2 of 73.5. Uh, bicarbonate was 22. Uh, electrolyte wise, uh, potassium was 3.1, sodium 129 mm. with the lactate of 1.6. Uh, her creatinine was 3.63 and uh, the total bilirubin which was shown in our BBG was 14.3. Okay. Uh, ECG was uh, normal sinus rhythm sir, uh, heart rate of 98. What may be the reason for low potassium here? Uh, sir, uh, leptospirosis itself uh, mm. can... Uh, Leptospirosis itself will not eat potassium. No, 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 uh, that's uh, 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 actually it increases no potassium. Uh, no, sir, nephrop... Polyuria phase of nephropathy, that is, uh, he is in uh, acute phase. So, what all things can produce hypokalemia at this stage, in uh, patient is admitted in your ICU. Uh, you no need to correct it because renal failure is there, but you should know why the potassium is going down. Either one, it may be patient is not taking proper diet or it, since the patient has developed acute renal failure, doctor might have restricted the potassium, they might have given Lasix, so it is coming down. She had vomiting, sir. So, severe vomiting was there, that itself can produce hypokalemia. Okay. Nebulization, Nebulization also can produce, but that is a transient effect, but it can still reduce. Okay. Coming to sample history, uh, patient was uh, having complaints of fever, body pain and vomiting since uh, last 5 days and she was admitted in outside hospital. She was also complaining of myalgia. Uh, initially, she was given uh, symptomatic management and was discharged from the hospital. But since her symptoms uh, persisted, she again went, visited the hospital. Then uh, patient was evaluated. Uh, she was also complaining of uh, while having deep inspiration, she was having pain bilateral lower chest. Uh, this uh, evaluated and she found to have thrombocytopenia uh, with a total counts of 17,000. Mm -hmm. uh, they sent dengue and leptospira for the patient and uh, leptospira platelet count is 17,000. No, no, platelet count outside was 33,000. 33, then uh, total counts was 17,000. Okay. Then uh, they tested for dengue and <coughs> leptospira uh, and uh, there was worsening of LFT and RFT in outside hospital. One, uh, three important conditions, one is uh, leptospirosis, mm -hmm. malaria, dengue. Okay, all will have thrombocytopenia, but leptospira will have slightly higher counts, okay, comparing to other two. So, that is one uh, clue you may get uh, like in acute acute phase of the illness, because uh, acute phase, uh, all conditions will be 
சிமிலர் டெங்கு இல்லை சிவியர் மசில் பெயின் த்ரம்பசைட்டோபினியா ஹை டிகிரி ஃபீவர் லெப்டோ இல்லை ஹை டிகிரி ஃபீவர் மசில் பெயின் த்ரம்பசைட்டோபினியா மலேரியா இல்லை ஹை 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 டிகிரி ஃபீவர் மசில் பெயின் அண்ட் த்ரம்பசைட்டோபினியா பட் இன் லெப்டோ ஸ்லைட்லி ஹையர் இட் இஸ் நாட் வெரி காமன் தட் யூ கெட் செவன்டீன் தௌசண்ட் எயிட்டீன் தௌசண்ட் பட் டுவெல் தௌசண்ட் தேர்ட்டீன் தௌசண்ட் வில் பி தேர் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த பேஷண்ட்ஸ் Uh, they had sent for leptos uh, pcr and pcr came to be positive sir uh, what are the investigations uh, you can do in acute leptospirosis so uh, if uh, fever onset within one week mm. we can send for uh, lepto pcr mm-hmm. and uh, we can also send for urine but mm. uh, we have to do dark field microscopy okay. for urine so fresh urine dark mm. field microscopy is the acute mm. uh, like mm. first investigation leptospirosis mm. in p- primary centers mm. okay Uh, because you take the patient in uh, urine and immediately look at in the dark field you can see the uh, uh, motel bacilli mm-hmm. motel uh, ba- uh, leptospira mm-hmm. then uh, pcr is a next mm-hmm. investigation of choice in a, a higher center like this okay after that uh, after one week we can test for the igg igm elisa test igm uh, this is not igg igg is for igg uh, is a long term uh, <coughs> like uh, po- po- mm-hmm. chronic it is not chronic it's a past infection mm-hmm. so immediate first one igm will be formed then igg will be formed so in that hospital patient uh, uh, started developing breathing difficulty mm. and patient desaturation was there up to 93% okay that is when patient was referred when to when patient hospital. desaturates uh, uh, what all things will it will come to your mind in leptospirosis so um, patient uh, yeah Diffusal Diffusal failure. Failure. Yeah, yeah, renal failure because oh, pulmonary edema can produce. Second produce. Second thing is ARDS. ARDS. Yes. Third one? Diffusal 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 failure. Diffusal failure. Mm-hmm. That is the most dangerous thing. Any patient is having breathing difficulty, X-ray shows, bilateral, mm-hmm. extensive uh, shadows, mm-hmm. which are brighter like heart, uh, that, that shadow, white in color. Then you have to be very careful. These patients can deteriorate very fast. Those who are having alveolar hemorrhage, the mortality is very high. Mm-hmm. So that you have to keep in mind when you are talking to the relatives, we have to tell that. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, allergic issue, she is not allergic to any known substance, uh, no regular medicines and she has no known comorbidities. Uh, so What ch- medicine history you should ask in this type of patients? Mm-hmm. What medical history you should, medical medicine history? NSAID. NSAIDs. NSAIDs. Because mm-hmm. most of the time what will happen in any fever most of the time doctors mm. might give nsaids mm. patients who is having who are having leptospira dengue it can uh, worsen the problem like it can reduce the platelet it can produce renal failure if renal failure is al- already existing mm. then patient can deteriorate on that part so we have to ask the history of uh, nsaid intake mm. okay because that happens very frequently mm. patient who is having muscle pain any doctor will give nsaids mm-hmm. okay but uh, that sometimes can create problem uh, coming to general examination <coughs> patient was uh, uh, there was no pallor but icterus was present there was no clubbing cyanosis lymphadenopathy uh, lymphadenopathy or any edema uh, then coming to systemic examination sir uh, patient was conscious oriented uh, re- respiratory system bilateral air entry was there with uh, scattered crepitations was there mm. uh, per abdomen soft uh, abdomen soft but epigastric tenderness was there sir uh, we also took a chest x-ray of the patient at this moment and this chest x-ray was showing epigastric tenderness what what is your diagnosis differential sir, diagnosis uh, could be due to any pancreatitis pancreatitis mm-hmm. leptospira is known to produce all these things that's mm-hmm. right okay. then uh, sir uh, and uh, then we sent for the all routine labs and a chest x-ray was taken for the patient chest x-ray was showing bilateral uh, infiltrates okay. in patient and she was requiring an oxygen of 5 liters initially uh, on initial labs uh, we sent uh, the total uh, counts came to be 12000 with a uh, um, crp of 230 and platelet of 10000 then uh, With, there was no bleeding manifestation at the moment, uh, but we, uh, next day platelet dropped down to 8,000. So we transfused the patient with three pints of RDP. Uh, LFT, RFT wise, patient was having a creat of 3.6 uh, and a total bilirubin of 14 with direct bilirubin of 10. OTPT wise, it was just uh, initially around 70, 80 in that range, sir. So, uh, sir. in view of aki we sought a nephrology consult and we planned uh, decided to uh, start the patient on hemodialysis 
what are the indications for dialysis in emergency room uh, sir uh, for in emergency room sir uh, first is uh, if there is oliguria for 12 hours oliguric uh, renal failure yeah. with uh, with complication like pulmonary edema or something and anuria because sir uh, oliguria anuria is uh, or, uh, like it can happen like uh, you have a patient who is having pre renal failure and creatinine is increased and if the treatment of choice is not dialysis yeah, yes. you give fluids yes. that will sometimes recover okay mm. so you have to be very careful when you are telling oliguria oliguria is one of the problem with uh, even with uh, fluid resuscitation is not passing urine you mm. can try okay so refractory hyperkalemia hyperkalemia okay refractory okay. hyperkalemia and sir uh, uremic uh, uh, uremic and cephalopathy uremic, uremic pericarditis all these things Toxins. fluid overload toxins toxins tox in toxicology many many uh, many toxins require dialysis okay severe metabolic acidosis okay severe metabolic acidosis mm-hmm. what happens if the metabolic acidosis is uncontrolled you are not able to control with routine measures what all things can happen is a major problem is contractility yes, that is a main problem patient go to cardiac mm-hmm. failure okay mm-hmm. the ca- contractility mm-hmm. will be compromised mm-hmm. so so patient was initiated on dialysis uh, and uh, since infective parameters were high she was started on injection uh, meropenem and uh, injection doxycycline okay what should be the dose of uh, meropenem in this patient uh, so according to creatinine clearance we mm. have to calculate start dose for uh, uh, start okay. dose start uh, dose can be minutes. same then uh, it has to be adjusted according to creatinine clearance creatin in leptospirosis meropenem is actually not required you might have started with uh, yes. without the proper uh, investigation at the first phase but you can easily deescalate the injections because leptospira requires normal antibiotic yes. it can be crystalline penicillin it can be amoxicillin augmentin uh, uh, doxycycline azithromycin anything is okay said uh, <coughs> she started on meropenem and doxycycline and then uh, three pints of platelet was transfused yeah. and uh, we were monitoring the platelets and looking for any uh, bleeding manifestations as such and then uh, rft lft was also uh, monitored sir uh, patient during the course of hospital say she required four dialysis sir. Uh, in four dialysis patients creat initially 3.8 uh, now coming down to 1.7 sir uh, with the lft Uh, was but uh, deranged uh, her uh, total bilirubin uh, was uh, like in increasing, increasing. total bilirubin from 14 had gone up to 19 20 that level but otpts were in the normal range initially okay. it was mild elevated then came back to normal okay. sir Uh, right now other infective parameters have reduced uh, we have deescalated the antibiotics also mm-hmm. what do you think about this lft pattern sir uh, in leptospirosis uh, after uh, the first week uh, initially the tot- uh, bilirubin starts rising mm. uh, but the otpts will be in the uh, normal range only mildly elevated uh, 100 uh, hundreds it is in hundreds, hundreds in the hundred range only mm. uh, then um, after some time the, it will come uh, start decreasing on its own okay. the, uh, so actually there is no liver injury okay. due to some reason Uh, the bilirubin metabolism is compromised and some level of obstruction is developing inside the liver the hepatocellular damage uh, mm. uh, and disruption of the intercellular junction between mm. the hepato uh, sites incre- uh, increases which is uh, leading to which leaking of bilirubin in, from the bile can- okay. canaliculi there is a, actually there is no major liver disease mm. S- due to some injury to the bile- biliary canaliculi mm. you are getting all these things mm. so no need to worry actually in uh, leptospirosis only bilirubin is elevated if stot stpt is elevated and bilirubin is elevated then you have to worry because that can kill the patient maximum if bilirubin elevates like this maximum complication what all things can happen one is a yellow color will happen everywhere the patient will be like tensed patient or bystander will be tensed what other encephalopathy is one uh, important problem that especially in children not in adult kernicterus uh, can happen then any ecg change bradycardia hmm? bradycardia is common when there is high level of bilirubin especially direct hyperbilirubin that is that is a classically seen in obstructive jaundice but here also when the bilirubin is very high you can see some level of uh, uh, sa node conduction delay and uh, bradycardia can happen Uh, what happened to this patient afterwards we have started dialysis, dialysis and four, uh, four uh, sessions of dialysis was done sir okay uh, 
initially the urea yeah. was very high so okay. after uh, repeated dialysis now the urea is also in 60 range with a creat of 1.7 uh, total counts everything has come down crp is also now in 32 uh, okay. like that just bilirubin is uh, just on the high yeah, yeah, right. on the high how do you side. know that this patient is not in hepatic encephalopathy so, uh, sensorium so, uh, so one is sensorium mm. then uh, then this uh, sleeping pattern like uh, she is daytime you know, sleepiness can be there and you have to check for flaps flapping come up that is the most important thing because whether it is uremic encephalopathy or hepatic encephalopathy mm. patient can develop a flapping tremors so every day you have to check that okay mm. even when we are telling uh, stot cpt is not elevated he cannot go to hepatic encephalopathy some patients will go because he is having high urea mm. And he is having high bilirubin. Some patients can go to hepatic encephalopathy. So we are every day we have to document all these things. Okay. Other than that, so for treatment of uh, leptospirosis, usually uh, leptospira is sensitive to uh, all uh, antibiotics. All antibiotics. We can give IV penicillin, beta lactam, cephalosporins, aminoglycosides, macrolides. Uh, if mild lepto, we can also give oral SE, amoxicillin, doxycycline, and okay. pisillin also. If you are not admitting, you can start any oral tablets and mm -hmm. send to the patient. So only doxycycline should not be given in pregnant and lactating baby. Okay. Okay. We can give ampicillin in such uh, okay. patients. Uh, dose of 30 to 50 milligrams. Amoxicillin can be given. Uh, ampicillin, ampicillin is ampicillin very difficult to get nowadays. The amoxicillin can be given. Uh, 30 to 50 milligram per kg body weight in divided okay. doses. So 7 okay. days we can give. Um, so you are giving meropenem, will it cover uh, leptospirosis? Yes sir, yes sir. You cover leptospirosis, but that may not be required, that's what I am telling. When you are seeing the lung parenchymal infiltrates and all, the doctor in emergency medicine can start it, but once you know that it is leptospirosis, immediately we have to de-escalate the um, treatment to normal common antibiotic, that is only required. Okay. What is the organism which produces leptospirosis? So, um, uh, the vector is vector or reservoir is rodents. 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 rodents uh, urine. Urine. Okay. Infected. Anything else you want to add? Anything else you want to add? Yeah, yeah. You can okay. tell about Wheel ah. syndrome also. Ah. Wheel syndrome. Okay. So, uh, sir, uh, leptospirosis usually causes uh, two spectrum of disease. One is uh, icteric, one is non icteric. Non-icteric will present normally with uh, fever, myalgia, body pain, vomiting, like that. And icteric phase when there will be uh, patients will having uh, deranged LFT and deranged RFT. Antibody production. Antibody will immune that phase. That will affect like your, your own immune mm. structures. Okay. So then a severe form of uh, leptospirosis is known as Wheels disease in which we have involvement of both uh, the uh, pre, um, yeah. kidney as well as the liver and uh, patient can also go into uh, acute renal failure, uh, patient can have um, jaundice, um, you, uh, edema, sepsis, septic shock. Can Almost all organ, uh, organs in your body can mm. be affected. You mm. can have renal failure, you can mm. have uh, pulmonary hemorrhage, you can mm. have uh, myocarditis, mm. you can have encephalopathy, bleed. bleed. Everything is possible. And that for, uh, what is, uh, if, mm. if you know the pathology behind leptospira and wheel syndrome, mm. there is no point in giving higher and higher antibiotic, in, especially in the second phase. There, mm -hmm. Even without antibiotic also patient can survive if you support the patient properly. But mm -hmm. first phase, that is a phase we mostly miss in mm -hmm. uh, our uh, hospitals, OPD. Mm -hmm. We normally think that it is a viral fever, mm -hmm. we don't start anything. Some patients can go to second phase. Mm -hmm. So, picking up the disease in first phase is very important in leptospirosis. Okay. Uh, examination lab wise we can have electrolyte imbalances like hypokalemia, hyponatremia, hypomagnesemia also uh, that is like a leptospiral nephropathy can occur okay. uh, that can help uh, lose magnesium through urine okay. uh, as a result of this potassium will also be low then hypotension will be there and uh, can be there due to a vasodilatation as well as uh, low albumin then oliguria anuria uh, can be there. Uh, Other than patient can also have cardiomyositis. Uh, patient can also go into rhabdomyel uh, rhabdomyolysis, rhabdomyolysis, cholecystitis, and pancreatitis. Okay. Uh, then uh, kidney injury usually it is acute uh, interstitial uh, nephritis uh, or tubular damage. Yes. Like that. Um, patient can also go into DIC, sir, consumptive uh, okay. DIC in later stages. Okay. Okay. Thank you.